Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. Joining me this week is BJ Kratz. We're continuing our fishing reports. BJ is in charge of the southeast part of the state. Uh, BJ, you guys just finished up your district uh, dissolved oxygen testing. How did uh, your lakes fare this morning? Overall, things look pretty good. Um, you know, it was several weeks ago, prior to the last snowfall event when we did it, but. Um, at that time, things actually looked better than average. A lot of our lakes were super saturated with oxygen. Uh, with the clear ice and the lack of snow in general, you know, things fared better this winter than they typically had in, in other years. Now, the last couple uh, ones that we checked, we've had some, some issues in a, in a few local lakes, but, you know, we won't be able to verify until the ice leaves in the, uh, you know, later this spring. So. How are water levels in some of these lakes? Water levels in general in the southeast district are down from 30 to 60 inches. So uh, it seems the farther south and east you go, the more you know, the water levels have receded. And um, we're, we're hoping for a little relief with, with the recent snows we've, we've gotten. Sure. Uh, let's move into your fish populations, BJ. Uh, let's talk about wa uh, walleyes in your district lakes. Yeah, we've, we're really pretty plush with walleyes in a lot of our natural lakes that have uh, formed on the landscape within the last 20 years. We've got uh, Barnes Lake would be a good one uh, this summer, I think. We've got uh, a good walleye population in there, multiple year classes. Um, the catch uh, rate in, in that lake when we survey it has been good the last several years. Um, uh, that's northwestern Stutzman County. Another one down in the southeast would be Craft Slough. That's another one that's a relatively new lake, uh, been around about 12 years or so, and uh, excellent walleye population there. We've got a really strong 2013 year uh, class in there. A lot of good 16 to 18 inch fish now for table fare, plus the opportunities to get some large fish. Okay, well, uh, let's move on to your northern pike populations. Couple lakes come to mind there. We've got Flood Lake, uh, that one, uh, was was pretty good a couple winters ago for ice fishing. Uh, this this year was no exception. The people that got out there and fished did pretty well. Uh, good catch rates in that lake. We also have Lake Lamore, which right at least in 2017, our, our netting surveys indicated it was probably one of the higher uh, population of pike that we've had in that system for for quite some time. And the, and the good thing there is there's some large pike present in that in that one too. So that that'd be a couple of good pike lakes to try. Okay, you have some of the best crappie fishing in the state. Well, uh, it, it continues to be great. Uh, every, or most folks know about pipe stem in Jamestown. Those are bread and butter crappie fisheries, certainly the best in the state in terms of you know, uh, catching fish. Uh, another one that's kind of come on the landscape the last several years is Grass Lake. Uh, that one is also, you know, has a good primarily one age class of fish, but they're very abundant and they're you know, 11 inches or so. And May is a great time to get out and, and cash in on those fish when they're typically along the shoreline and not out in the middle, suspended and so forth. So it's easier for anglers to, to, to capitalize on them. Any other panfish? Um, got some largemouth bass opportunities too. Dead Colt Creek, for example, has got a, a great bass population. Uh, bluegills are, are also pretty, pretty abundant in there. The neat thing about Dead Colt is it's got great facility around the whole thing for shore fishermen, for it's got a good boat ramp, a park is there, and it's got some large bass present too that anglers typically catch each year too. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of different variety of, of sizes there. Okay, and perch? Perch, um, we've got our, our standard, a lot of our lakes are typically winter type access for, for perch because it seems that our interest for anglers for the most part tends to focus on, on pike and, and walleye in the summer and sure. it focuses to perch. But uh, pipe stem actually has come on strong. We had a good, good fishery out there for perch uh, this winter. Uh, a lot of comments came back that it's been the best okay. that people have ever experienced out there. So that one, I would expect anglers to be able to catch some you know, 10 inch perch uh, pretty commonly out there. So How about trout? Trout, we've got our, our urban fisheries typically. The best trout fishery we probably have in the southeast would be Bloomheart Dam. Uh, that's a really unique little place. It's uh, kind of isolated in the hills uh, south and, and west of Jamestown. It doesn't receive a lot of pressure, but it's, one, it's got pretty good water quality, and we do have carryover in, in that system, so there are 
you know, the potential to catch a few larger fish than typical 12 inches or so that are, are normally caught. Okay. And we stocked muskie this last fall. Yep, we did. We have, uh, this is the second of three years now for Ashtabula. We didn't quite have the numbers that we wanted to stock, but nonetheless, we did it. Uh, the, the first stocking in, in 2016 went over really well. In fact, uh, last summer, a lot of anglers had caught, you know, 13 to 20 inch muskies. Uh, particularly in June, it was incidental catches, of course, but we had a lot of reports. So we're hoping that uh, this year that continues, except the fish will be, you know, 25 inches instead of 15. But any projects this spring summer that you guys are working on? Um, we we did have a little opportunity last fall. The State Water Commission had um, done some work on Calm Edgeley Dam, and the water levels were about three to four feet low, and we took advantage of that to enhance what we have, uh, kind of a, a low-density bluegill population there uh, by enhancing it by creating some spawning areas for it. So we, the SOL and, and us guys at uh, Jamestown helped out and we went down there and excavated some, an area in the northeast portion of the lake, uh, came in there and, and put some, you know, like pea rock down for substrate. And um, now when the impoundment comes up this spring, hopefully that'll be inundated. Uh, under two to four feet of water, and we'll monitor it this summer, you know, through, through some seining probably, through cameras, and uh, possibly electrofishing to see what, you, you know, what happens there and see if those fish actually use it, which we're hoping. So. A lot of good information, BJ. Thank you. Thank you. Switching gears now up to the northwest part of North Dakota, fisheries biologist Aaron Slominski joins me. Uh, Aaron's in charge of a lot of the district lakes up there and oversees the paddlefish season. Aaron, uh, you guys just finished up your dissolved oxygen testing here not so long ago. How do things look? Uh, generally pretty good. Uh, most of our lakes had adequate oxygen. Uh, one lake in concern was uh, Skirmal Lake up in Divide County. Uh, the oxygen was fairly low, so that uh, could be expected to winter kill this year. Okay. How are water levels looking? Uh, most lakes water levels have been down, uh, continue to drop with the dry weather we've had, especially last year with the extreme drought, but a uh, little bit of snow on the landscape, hopefully freshen things up a little bit this spring. Okay, you got a lot of fish species in your district, let's uh, go over those individually. Let's start out with walleyes, give me some walleye lakes and how are the populations doing? Okay, yeah, uh, Blacktail Dam and McGregor Dam are probably our two best walleye fisheries up in the northwest. Uh, both lakes have, have a good population of fish, uh, both lakes have fish 20 over 20 inches. Uh, McGregor Dam, there should be a lot of uh, up, up and comer, smaller fish, but hopefully in the next few years those fish grow up and come catchable size. Okay, how about northerns? Uh, we do have quite a few quality northern pike lakes. Uh, some of the pike lakes that have been producing the last couple of years, Cottonwood Lake, uh, Powers Lake. Uh, Cottonwood Lake saw a fair amount of spearing activity this winter. The water clarity was pretty decent this winter, so those are probably our two top pike lakes. Okay, and panfish. Yeah, we got some pretty good quality panfish lakes. Uh, the two good bluegill producers have been Leland Dam, Northgate Dam, um, and crappies. Trenton Lake's been standard good crappie fishery for quite a few years already. Okay, and trout? Yeah, we got a lot of our urban lakes um, get stocked with trout annually. Uh, Stanley Pond, Watford City Pond, Spring Lake Park in Williston, and then a couple of our lakes that uh, have carryover trout, uh, McGregor Dam and Northgate Dam. McGregor Dam has some nice trout, four or five pound fish. Okay, uh, let's move on to the paddlefish season, which starts May 1st. Uh, some changes this year. Yes, uh, we're changing the hours on the season. Uh, the season will open at 7 in the morning, and it will close at 7 in the afternoon, more so to help facilitate uh, the data collection that goes on at the fish cleaning station, uh, shorten those hours up in the evening so we can get a lot of the fish come through the station earlier in the day instead okay. of later in the day. So. And it used to close at 9? Nine. Nine. Yes. Okay, um, the date, the closing date also changed, right? Yes, we, uh, we did shorten up the season. It'll be a 21-day season. Um, basically, twice in the last uh, 14 or 15 years, the season has only ran the full length of the season. And this just closing the season, the uh, 21st, will help us facilitate with the data collection uh, at the confluence also. But uh, yeah, the season hardly ever goes the entire length of May. And um, when it, the two years that it did, the, the effort definitely tails off later in May, so. Okay, any uh, in your district this year, Aaron, is there any uh, special research projects or anything you're doing uh, this summer? Oh, uh, well, we're tied up with the paddlefish season, I guess. Um, North Star Caviar has always operated since 1993. They've offered uh, a free cleaning service at the confluence during the paddlefish season. 
And last year they chose not to operate, so the Game and Fish Department ran this free cleaning service. Um, it's a good way for us to get our hands on majority of the paddlefish that get harvested. We get a lot of good data collected from each individual fish, um, specifically our age data from the fish that get brought into the cleaning station. Um, but this year the Williston Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, is overseeing the caviar operations for the future, and they will they will operate out of the fish cleaning out of station at the confluence this spring. So expect uh, the fish cleaning station to be fully operable. And uh, yeah, if you snag a paddlefish on snag and harvest day, uh, the free cleaning service will still be provided, and we can collect a lot of good data off that fish. A lot of good information there. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Fishing licenses for the 2018-19 season can be purchased online at the Game and Fish Department's website at GF. Dot nd dot gov, or at licensing vendors that are linked to the department's online licensing system. Licenses may also be purchased by calling the department's instant licensing telephone number at 800-406-6409. Anglers are reminded that new fishing licenses are required April 1st. For fisheries biologists BJ Kratz and Aaron Slominski and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.